So again, switching gears and focusing on saccular aneurysms. So this is an interesting study out of the New England Journal that looked at a bunch of MRIs and just noted the prevalence of a variety of incidental findings on 2,000 MRI scans. And, and it's actually interesting to see uh, beyond the scope of aneurysms what they found. Uh, but what you could see is that 1.8% of patients had cerebral aneurysms truly incidentally. And this is an interesting prevalence study from the New England Journal. I think perhaps uh, the most useful study was this uh, meta-analysis uh, published in Lancet Neurology about a decade ago that basically just took all these studies together to help really define the prevalence of cerebral aneurysms in a variety of populations. So you can see this was an, a meta-analysis of 68 studies with 83 populations uh, with a whole bunch of aneurysms in patients. And the overall prevalence from this study was 3%. So you know that's what I generally cite in my clinic to patients when I talk about the prevalence of aneurysms. Now you can see that the vast majority of aneurysms, two thirds were less than five millimeters in size. This is very small. 27% were five to nine millimeters or shall we say average size and only 7% were large. That is a centimeter or larger, 10 millimeters or larger. Interestingly, they found that there was no impact on the country of origin of the study on the general prevalence. So this is nice because if you read say a study from another country, um, this meta-analysis suggests that that can have uh, reasonable validity to our country, at least in terms of prevalence data. They found that there was a statistically, statistically significant increase in prevalence of aneurysms among patients with autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, ADPKD, if there was a family history of aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage, or the pre you can see I noted the prevalence ratios in the slide, and for female sex, uh, particularly if the patients are older than 50, if they looked at patients older than 50. Interestingly, apropos of the prior study that was fairly authoritative, they found that if you only looked at studies that used MRI without MRA, MR angiography or CT angiography, they perhaps cited a lower prevalence of cerebral aneurysms, presumably because of the lower sensitivity of the study modality in detecting the aneurysm. So this emphasized the importance of using MRA or CTA as your initial screening modality. But again, the take home point from this meta-analysis in this slide is that in general, the overall prevalence of, of cerebral aneurysms is 3%. So saccular aneurysms, what are some risk factors for their formation? So again, these are aneurysms that occur at stress points. This is a basilar apex aneurysm you can see here, a, a bifurcation aneurysm. And when we look in the literature fairly consistently, we, there are modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors. So the non-modifiable risk factors of aneurysm formation are increasing age. So young patients generally don't get aneurysms uh, unless they have traumatic aneurysms, but rarely in familial cases, certainly they can have aneurysms. Uh, female sex, aortic coarctation is actually also a risk factor. And then there are, there are frank other genetic risk factors. So family histories that we've already alluded to, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, the, the, the following are a little bit less uh, formal, but generally accepted, M multiple endocrine neoplasia, MEN type 1, hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, HHT, Ehlers-Danlos type 4, Marfan syndrome, and neurofibromatosis type 1 are potential risk factors for cerebral aneurysms independently. Importantly, the modifiable risk factors, the things that I mentioned in my patients in clinic, generally correlate to poor cardiovascular health. So smoking, hypertension, poor cardiovascular health generally equates, in fact, to a risk factor of cerebral aneurysm formation, which is important to emphasize. Hey, everyone. Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.